I think uh, this weekend against Nebraska, uh, very exciting, challenging weekend coming up. Uh, should be very exciting in Spartan Stadium. Uh, really looking forward to the opportunity. Uh, great football game last year. A lot of riding on the game. Uh, really one of the reasons you probably come to a place like Michigan State and play in a conference like this is, is to have these type of games show. So there will be a lot of national media attention. Uh, when you look at Nebraska, I think you see a very well coached team. Coach Bellini has had uh, uh, tremendous success there in the past seven years. I think this is his seventh year as a head coach there. He's um, won nine games, I think, the previous six years, at the very least. So, a lot of success. Uh, great, great football players, great football team. Obviously, the offense is anchored by, by Amir Abdullah and uh, Kenny Bell, Tommy Armstrong defensively, uh, Gregory and uh, Santos probably. So, um, challenge. We'll have to be at our best. Expect us to be at our best, um, and we'll focus on energy. So I'll take questions. You have to raise your hand for the microphones. Mark, to your left. When you look at their uh, quarterback Armstrong, how is he different this year than last year? I think last year, at, at this time last year, you know, he was just coming into his own. He was just starting to really play a lot. Uh, and you know, this year he's more experienced. You know, that's his only loss that he's he's had on since since he's been a starting quarterback was last year. Um, and I'm sure he wants some of those plays back. So I think he's much more experienced, much more confident. He's a playmaker, much more in control of the offense. And he is the guy this year. Whereas last year he was a guy that was, you know, initially it was Martinez, and then it was the other guy, and, that, and then it was him. Uh, I think he's the guy in charge, and there's confidence goes along with that. And, and, a sense of ownership, and I think that that's a positive for any football program. How do you compare Martinez? Uh, you know, they're going to do similar things, I believe, but uh, you know, Martinez, uh, Martinez, so, I mean, exceptionally fast out in the open field. I think uh, Tommy Armstrong's a lot more like Braxton Miller, probably. Um, you know, able to break tackles. Uh, you know, one of those type of guys, my opinion. Mark, as you've watched your offense take off since last year, the, the Nebraska game there last year, how is a step for that group when, when Nebraska actually was able to get some off or offense going on their own against your defense? Was that the first game the offense actually kind of had to win for you, and how important was that setting for everything that's transpired <coughs> since? Well, as far as the setting goes, it was the, uh, the last football team that we had not won against on the roads. Uh, so we accomplished that feat, and that was one of the things that we needed to do, I think, as a program. So we looked at us, you know, it was a program win, because we needed to go to a place like Nebraska, where we didn't have a lot of fans in the stands, and they had a ton, and be able to play and play well, and that was accomplished. Uh, offensively, we were starting to click, and, uh, you know, I think we, we, we saw that, felt that, but we got great field position from our defense. And, yeah, they hit a couple plays, they hit two, two you know, a long run, uh, hit a couple plays, but um, on us offensively. But you know the turnovers that we were able to acquire really were, you know, had a lot to do with. I think the game um, would have been a much closer game. It was still a close game, but but it would have been even a much more closer game. You know, series in, series out. I think beyond that. So good football team. They know how to run the ball. Interesting enough, they run the ball very, very well, and um, they play, play pass defense very, very well. So it's a little bit interesting, you know, when you when you look at that aspect of them on defense. You know, they're very highly ranked in passing efficiency and have been uh, throughout the years, and then they've always been able to run the football. Coach, would you mind just describing Curtis Drummond's leadership on the defense this year? How he's uh, kind of evolved into that role? Yeah, Curtis is a quiet leader, but uh, confident, uh, much like a coach on the field. There's a lot of things that he's experienced in his in his five years here as a player. He's experienced being red-shirted, so he understands how the freshmen feel. He's experienced being the nickelback um, in 2011 and coming in and out of the game and playing on all the special teams. So he can, he can, um, he understands how those guys are feeling. And then he's been a starter, and he's understood the pressures that come with being a starter and playing at the highest level. He's been an All Big Ten player. Um, you know, he's been a catalyst for our defense and a catalyst for our secondary. And uh, you know, he's a He's a player, player coach, really, and you know he has great relationships with our coaches as well. Uh, outstanding young man, and 
you know, everything that you want in terms of uh, a player, a work ethic guy, preparation off the field, and uh, really a good person. Mark, you've only played them three times, but it seems like they've been really intense. And you know, I go back to the game when maybe your most gut-wrenching loss here. Is this quickly becoming a rival of yours? I think we have a lot of rivals, I guess, in this conference, you know, because there's a lot of games like that. But, but uh, they've been great football games. You know, the one in 2012, you know, the one in 2011, I don't think we played up to our abilities. Um, we had very high hopes going into that game, but didn't play well enough. Um, but 12, we came to play. It's a great football game. You know, don't really want to rehash some of that. But uh, And then 13 last year, also a great football game. And, uh, you know, two competitive football teams, two teams that don't like to lose, don't want to lose, nobody does. But um, they play with a lot of effort, play with a lot of toughness, play with a lot of desire. And you see that on the field, up-tempo. Um, but you see that you can feel the adrenaline, you can feel the emotion from both football teams. Whenever you go, you can feel the emotion. And that's exciting, and that's what makes college football um, so great, so unique. Mark, when you look at, at these two programs, historically both you and, and Bo are defensive guys, but the offenses this year have been leading the way and scoring a lot of points. Why is that? And is that out of the norm, and do you expect a kind of a high-scoring shootout here? Uh, is that out of the norm? It doesn't seem like it's out of the norm in this day and age in, in college football. There are so many different ways uh, the people are lining up and creating motion and creating different formations, and it's, it's sort of cutting edge. Uh, you see that from our offense as well. You see a lot of different ways to do things. I think offenses right now are keeping things simple but comprehensive, which that's what I've always believed as a defensive coach. Uh, comprehensive to the extent that you're very difficult to prepare for. Simple to the, to the effect that these are the concepts we run and we try and expand on those concepts. They've got great players. I'm talking about a lot of offenses now. Um, they have great players at the skilled positions. Uh, many people are using those skilled position players to run the football as well as to catch it. Um, throwers run it as well as throw it, and running backs seem to run it and catch it. So um, the versatility of all the, all the offensive skill players really, really is being used, I think, by coaches across this country. Coach? I uh, th think you're 8 and 2 in your career at uh, home right here. Uh, night games? Uh, is there a different atmosphere or something that uh, comes to the night games rather than, let's say, a new game against Wyoming? Yeah, you know, Spartan Stadium comes alive uh, every Saturday, but I think especially in night games. You know, and I can remember the night games when I was here before, you know, and whether it be Notre Dame or, or you know, Oregon or whatever, whatever it was. I mean, they're exciting games. Uh, we've had a lot of exciting games here uh, since we've been, since I've been back as a head football coach. and. Uh, I just think, you know, you sit all day, it's hard to sit, it's hard to sit all day, but as you sit all day on Saturday afternoon, you're seeing all these different games being played, and your games being talked about, and you just can't help but, but get a little hyped. Uh, and then, then you, I think that, that same thing happens to your fans. Um, it's a big game, it's going to be very loud in there, especially when they have the ball, and uh, hopefully. And it uh, should be an exciting atmosphere, it should be a great atmosphere, and, you know, it's a program game, I think. You know, when you, you have that opportunity like that to put uh, you on a big stage, which makes it exciting. Coach, still in the back. Um, you open the season with a game against Oregon, a very tough team. Uh, then you go with two, we'll say, less tough teams. How does that contrast affect your team going into the Big Ten season? You know, we play who's in front of us. I've talked about that before. I think it's important that we focus and, and pay everybody respect and get ready to play them. And that's what we've done. Um, you know, so this is the next one up. There'll be one after this one. So our, our focus has got to be to bring every energy, every single game, and treat them all the same, and then play as enthusiastically as we can. I think certainly the competition level is going to be higher. Um, we expect that. We acknowledge that. Uh, but we've played in those environments before, and uh, you know, it'll be a great test for us, great challenge. And, and again, it goes back to what I talked about last week. We'll start to develop an identity, and I think that's a, that's a step. That's a step in every season that you have to take. You have to figure out <coughs> this is our identity, this is who we are a little bit more. You find out a little bit more about, about our football team until, until you finally, at the end of the, uh, the season, you sort of come to some conclusions generally. Mark, can you talk about your policies and protocol within the department 
when it comes to head trauma and head injuries for players? What, what situations happen on the sidelines that you guys go through? And, and other folks have been bringing up a Will Golston situation from 2012 uh, where he said he got knocked out. Where do you trust where a player says versus what the medical staff says? Uh, first of all, we have a neurologist on the sidelines, Dr. David Kaufman, and then Dr. Randy Pearson is also has extensive concussion uh, uh, research and things of that nature. So we rely on our medical staff. As a coach, I've also sat in three and a half hour concussion symposium um, from a leading expert in the country. Uh, all of us have to pass a concussion um, test and really education test, formatted education, and then test beyond that uh, for both youth campers and then uh, for high school campers, and then you know that that also serves for our for our players. Um, <coughs> We're not going to put anybody in the game that we think is at risk. I can't comment on on the Will Golson thing because I can't. I'm not sure when that happened, but we established the baseline for every player when they walk in the door, uh, and that baseline then is uh, is given. That baseline test is given to a young man who has uh, got a possible concussion, and that's called an impact test. And that impact test basically talks to the relevance of the concussion. The, I know the younger a player is, even a true freshman, um, it takes longer for them to get over a concussion than, let's say, a senior, a fifth-year senior. So there is a correlation between the age of a young person. Uh, and it's important that that person be, be um, concussed, you know, have, have no symptoms of concussion. We always start back having our people um, do light exercise and see if they, how, they, how they handle that. And, you know, that's what we do, and we've sat numerous people because of it. That's our policy, and I think our, our doctors are are um, as up as we can on it. And there's a, but but concussions, as you know, there's there is gray gray area in that because players want to continue to play too, and sometimes you you're trying to you know they're telling you they're okay and those type of things. Mark, a couple of depth chart things real quick. I see Jack Allen, Gleicher. Kittredge, Knox are all back on. Are you assuming they're going to play, or is there still a wait and see? A little bit on Well, I think there's a wait and see maybe on um, on. Uh, I don't talk about injuries, but hmm. we'll leave it at that. Okay. I mean, the, the, yeah, yeah, they're on the depth chart. Okay, <laughs> but along the offensive line, you got at least you got to get some of those other guys back in. Certainly, yeah. Tom Cruise last week, and you mentioned a couple weeks ago you wanted to see more from the running game. Is, is this offensive line? At the point you, you need it to be at this point going into the Big Ten. Yeah, I think our offensive line is, uh, is gelling. We've got Connor Cruz back, so that was a positive. And that gives us more depth experience. When I say more depth, I mean starting depth on our offensive line. So, uh, you know, but again, things are so wrapped up in is how the wide receivers block, how the tight ends block. If we have a fullback in the game, how he blocks. Um, how he takes stress off the off the offense by doing different things, you know, relative to formations like I just talked about. So there's a lot of things to running the football. You know, I guess if you evaluate running the football, you got to look and ask yourself, okay, Nebraska has the ball. Now, take out the quarterback scrambles out of that. You know, what do they get pure rushing when they run downhill? You know, that's how you evaluate our defense against the rush. And again, that's how I would evaluate our offense. Take out the scrambles. You need to scramble. Take out some of the other things that you do. Um, and what is pure rushing? You know, what is, do you have the ability to purely run the football? Mark, over here. Um, obviously, Wyoming more seasoned club than, than, say, Eastern Michigan. Have you been able to quantify that offensive performance yet based on the, the film and, you know, how it will translate into a you know, higher level of point where that offense is? I think when you look at a passing game, you're looking at timing. Uh, you're looking at uh, you know accuracy of the throws. You're looking at pass protection. I think our pass game is playing is is, is playing very very well. Passing game, you know, we're executing very well. Uh, you can see that. You can see as Connor talked about throwing a guy open. You can talk. You can see him throwing throwing the receivers and the ball being right on the money before the guy even makes his cut. Uh, that's a positive. Um, so we're executing, I think, on the running attack. It gets a little bit more physical in terms of, of who you're playing against, certainly. I think you have to quantify that a little bit. But, but um, as far as where we're at, as, you know, as a, 
as an offensive football team, we're doing the things we need to do. We're making the catches. Uh, we've not turned the football over. We're not beating ourselves too often, although we had some penalties last week. Um, that was a little bit out of character maybe for this season thus far. I um, hope it does not continue, but we've been, we've been executing, playing very well on the offensive side of the ball, and I think it shows. I mean, I don't care who you play, you put up 72 points or 73 points, that's a lot of production. Same with the, the, um, the, the output this past week. So, um, and even if, even if you look at the Oregon game, you know, we were in position to score a couple more touchdowns in that football game. Coach, uh, on the other side of the ball, the defense, and I know we talked a little bit about that after the last game in, in big plays. I guess I'd like to know um, where you think the defense is, is headed from here. Can it end up being as good as last year's? Is there still time for that? And then my other question is, you were on those Michigan State staffs um, that, that suffered some pretty horrendous losses to Nebraska. I wonder as a coach if you ever forget that or when you're a defensive coach when a team puts 50 on you, if that's something that always kind of stays with you. Oh, yeah, it always stays with you. But I have to tell you that I was at Kansas before I came here, so, um, you know, we just refer to it as the big red machine in my house at that point in time. So, um, but yeah, the, our, first, our first game here and as a staff in 1995, we played Nebraska with Tommy Frazier and Lawrence Phillips. And, uh, um, you know, it was quite a football team. So. As far as uh, our defense is concerned, I think that uh, my feelings are that the things that, when things happen and there is a breakdown, it's about, it's about how we get it fixed. Do we get it fixed with personnel? Do we get it fixed with structure? Do we get it fixed with coaching on the sideline? Those type of things. And I think that um, it's very apparent that we have the ability to do those things. We've done it in the past. Um, our defense is not broke. I know that. We gave up 14 whopping points last week, but um, you know our defense is not broke. I mean, we still have, I think, the second-ranked defense in the, against the run in the, in the conference, and I think we're number four in the nation. Uh, I'm not sure where we are in points production-wise, but but um, you know we have a breakdown. We've got to fix it. But this is modern-day football. It's extremely uncommon, you know, for um, for teams to give up, you know, to shut people out or to to give up one touchdown to win games, you know, 20 to seven. That's extremely uncommon these days. Uh, so, you know, last year's defense uh, set the bar very high. The expect expectations are very high. The ex there's expectations from our coaching staff and from our players to be, to be that dominant. Okay, but we have to play ourselves to that position. And every game's a new challenge. It presents new challenges with new formations and new players, and new concepts to deal with. And it's how you change every week that really you know, is going to uh, uh, define you, I guess is what I'd say. And then you have the physical part of it, the tackling, playing the ball in deep part of the field, you know, coverage aspects, but um, you have the physical aspect of it that you have to be able to, to, to deal with as well. Now, just to so I hope I'm answering it, but yeah, I think we can be as good. And just to, to follow up on that, that first part of, about Nebraska and your time at, at Kansas, how big of a step, you've talked about taking steps in this program and, and first, how big of a step would it be to, to be the first Michigan State team to beat Nebraska in, in consecutive years against a program like that, I guess? Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, it's a big football game for us, period. Uh, I think it's not so much Nebraska as it's, it's winning our first Big Ten game. It's, it's uh, going to 4-1 and one as much as anything. We have great challenges down the road. Uh, they have a great program. Um, so we're going to see how we play, but it's going to be very exciting. We need to drive it home. Mark, with Tony Lippett, it seemed like early last year he was kind of even out of the rotation a little bit in those first couple games. Can you pinpoint, I you know you guys had a meeting, but a certain moment where maybe it flipped for him? Yeah, I do think it flipped on, uh, I do flip, it flipped after the, the Notre Dame game, I believe. I remember, and then he started catching the ball very well, and he's just such a confident player right now. Um, he's extremely difficult to cover. He's a big guy, you know, he goes 6'3". He's got some toughness to him, but he's extremely confident, and, you know, runs great routes, and he understands our offense and can play variety of positions. 
Mark, when you, when you look at your offense and the time of possession versus the points scored, that shows the, the efficiency that you guys are working with right now. Uh, it, that's also rare, though, in this day and age, because usually you see the up and down. I mean, talk about the ball control that this offense has proven while also scoring the points. Yeah, you know, it's two, it's, it's two, it's two headed type thing, you know. I mean, we still are getting people off the field, three and out. That's still occurring. You know, even last week it was five times three and out. Uh, you can look at uh, even the Oregon game, I think we went five straight times three and out. So that's getting the ball back to our offense, and our offense is able to control the football. Converting on third downs, the ability to run the ball, stay balanced, those type of things also I think plays into this and the execution. But um, it is big, especially now. We we have the ability to go up tempo, but we're more of a you know we're still we're still huddling, so that means a little bit more possession time that comes with that. But uh, we're, we're playing a significant amount of plays every week, and that's the bottom line. You know, how many plays are you putting on the field? So whether it's 82 or 90, you know, we're playing to that level, which you know, I think last week maybe uh, Nebraska had 96 against Illinois. Um, so you know we're up in their 80s, high 80s or 90s. Mark, the, uh, some of the different offensive stuff we saw on Saturday with just getting wide out the ball in different ways and also on the touchdown pass to Price. Um, I'm not asking you to go into great detail here, but just how long has that kind of been in the works and, and how did you guys go about uh, putting that in? Uh, that's, been in the, that's been in the works for a while. We've done some of those things since the spring. We're constantly trying to develop new ways and new looks and those type of things. And I think, quite frankly, I think Jim Bowman and Bringing Jim Bowman back here uh, to Michigan State has added in that capacity. You know, he's a guy that has had a, a extensive uh, knowledge of quarterback runs with Pryor being down at Ohio State. Those type of people that they've had down there. Um, and I think that, you know, he's brought some of that with him. And he's been a great addition to this to this staff. Uh, but all of our offensive coaches added this and, uh, you know, they're, they're doing a tremendous job. And also, uh, real quick, do you expect Montez Sweat to redshirt at this point? Uh, I'm not sure. It'll, we'll have to see because we've got the ability to go until six games before we have to make decisions of that nature. I mean, you know, he hasn't played. The, the rules are you can't play in four games. So, you know, he has that ability, but we have to see how his, his injury status is, basically. Mark, when it comes to playing starters the first few weeks, I guess specifically probably Connor and, and Jeremy mostly, um, I, I feel like in the past it's been a, a, an issue to get some of those backups in. W was that a change in your, your thought process this year, or was it just a case of that's how the game's kind of played out, so you got to get backups in a lot more? Well, the game's played out that way, but also we tried to force the issue, especially the first game. And really, I mean, this last game forced the issue as well. I just feel like when they go in and the game is not over, that there's more um, there's more pressure on them to play well. And you know, there's some risk in doing that, but I feel like we can handle that risk. Uh, and I think it's, it provides greater growth for those individuals. And you see what they've got in a little bit more crunch time, and I think that's a positive for them. And it tells them we have confidence in them as well. <clears throat> Just to follow up on that, didn't you say that's what helped with Connor Crook's development when he got into some meaningful time with backing up Andrews? Yeah, I did. And you know, his redshirt freshman year, um, he played, I think, in the Iowa game very, very briefly, and then but we came back in the TCU game and, and played him. I made a commitment to doing that. And you know, it was a little scary to do it, but we made a commitment to doing that, and, and I think he excelled. He started to get better, and he started to get more confident, and I think those things carry over. 15 night games in school history, you've coached in nine of them. I don't want to overanalyze this, but have you changed the way you prepare for that? I mean, do you change your cornflakes, or have you learned anything from playing all these night games? Well, yeah, we look, you know, we try and, we try and pass the time and keep them busy, but um, also keep them, allow them to stay fresh. I think the big things we're trying to do is bring energy to the game and stay fresh. Um, I don't know if we're going to have a problem with that this week, because I, I think our guys are ready to play, and I'm sure they're ready to play as well as show. So it should be very, very exciting. Coach, uh, comparing Nebraska to Oregon, are there some concepts offensively that are similar? And looking back at what Oregon did, did you, did you, did they steal anything from what they'd seen from Nebraska? I know Frost has some connections to that school. Yeah, I think there are a lot of similarities in what they've done. Uh, you know, Frost has connections. I think he visited Nebraska, probably 
spring before or whatever the case, much like all coaches do in preparing for a new opponent. So there are similarities, you know, zone reads and things of that nature, you know, quarterback runs, you know, some option, uh, play action passes and things of that nature. So there, there is a lot of, I think there's carryover. Not a lot, you know, how much they're, you know, a little bit unknown, but there is carryover. But there's, it's a different, a different personnel, which makes it a different style though, too. Nebraska, some of the, the player, one of the players was saying yesterday, he felt like Michigan State would stay pretty true to form on defense, and I, I know Coach Narduzzi has spoken about doing that. Do you, is Nebraska typically a team that stays pretty true to form? I mean, is it, do you guys kind of know what to expect from one another, or do you think they'll be? No, know? I think I think basically both football teams know who they are and stay who they are. I really believe that. And they have a system on defense. They believe in their system. They're going to play their, their defense. They have a system on offense. They know that. They're going to have wrinkles. They're going to have tweaks. But it's going to be who they are. And uh, I think the same can be said basically for us. Um, we've had success in what we're doing. And uh, we're going to maintain true to form. But we're going to have tweaks. And we're going to always have uh, adjustments and try and get better and, and do the different things that we have to do to make sure that, that we offset any of the things that they do. Mark, that's making sense. Wondering kind of how you see the offensive line rotation working out with Connor back. Does he kind of get back to that right guard starting spot eventually? Or does he kind of become the jack of all trades he was before? I think Connor can play offensive center. He can play guard. He can play either guard. And I think he can play right tackle. He probably can play left tackle as well. So he's a guy that can go anywhere, any place, any time. Guys has extensive knowledge of our system. And I think the one thing that Connor Cruz brings is another very strong leader on our offensive football team, a guy that understands adversity, that promotes toughness, and that um, is, um, is a guy that you want with you. He's a guy that, that you want surrounding you. Um, he's a tremendous leader for us. And I think that, is, as much as anything, brings back into the, into the fold. Uh, so he just adds to our, to our group. As far as being a starter, we'll see how he's, how he's progressing this year. He played, I think, 22 plays this last week. But, so he's coming back, but he's got to get back into playing shape, and that would be the same with all those guys. Coach, is there a scenario where, where we're going to see uh, Damian Terry's package of plays, or is that kind of uh, more for games that are a little bit less uh, close with the score? You don't really expect me to answer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, try. We've got time for two more. Uh, Mark, another uh, concussion protocol question. Uh, in terms of communication, if, if someone is diagnosed, say, like on a Sunday, what would be the expectation there in terms of the information getting to you? Uh, the information comes to me uh, immediately, directly, and uh, they tell me that, uh, that he's got an issue and that we got to keep him out. And then we work to try and bring him back gradually, you know, and they work through, through our weight room, you know, on treadmills or such, or lifting lightly, and then progress to to working out heavily and then running heavily, and then when you know when there's when they're cleared and they pass their baseline test, there's no headaches, no problems, and that's when they're they're brought back into the fold. And but then again, they're again brought back in limited gradually. Time for one more. We got one. Just kind of along those lines again with with the concussion situation, you kind of alluded to it before, but. How much do you have to fight and, and the medical staff inform players when to back away? You know, when you talk about player toughness, that's that's something that, you know, you don't, there's the whole concept of playing hurt and playing injured. How do you get them to, to, to find that line with, within themselves as players? I think it's difficult because you try to educate them, but at the same time, having played college football, there are times when you're, you, you know, you hit somebody and you're stunned. You're stunned a little bit, and you know you gotta, you know, clear clear your head or whatever the case. And so, you know, guys want to stay in, and if they, and a lot of times they feel like they can stay in, and sometimes, quite frankly, they don't tell you. They don't, they do not tell you what's going on. So, you know, it's difficult to assess sometimes like that. I think it's difficult, but uh, our protocol is as I've said. So I think when they see a hit. And they acknowledge that that was that something happened there. Then the next step has to be the testing aspect of it. But you, you, you know, it's difficult to, to 
to recognize sometimes because there's a lot of people flying around out there.